wire comes loose from the motor in this thing and touches the metal frame, the electricity is looking for a place to go. If your ground plug is connected, it goes right to the planet Earth, it blows a fuse, it's annoying but not life-threatening. If the third prong is off that plug, the wire comes off, the electricity is looking for a place to go and you grab the case, you're the place it goes. And remember, this is like putting the fork in the outlet. We are much more afraid of 110 volts at 20 amps than we are of 200,000 volts at a microamp. Okay? So this is a ground. If I turn this guy on and hold this here, all the electricity just gets pumped up and back down and around. No sparks, no nothing, no drips. Okay? So this way somebody can put their hand on the ball and not get a, get a shock. Then we put this down. We no longer touch that. And now we're loading charge up on in. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> okay? Now it takes time. Okay? Because I'm a big object. Luckily, I've gotten better at this with age. Because, you know, with age, nature comes along and says, you know, he'd be a much better demonstration if we thin that hair out. If he lost about half of it. If it became like thin and scraggly and weighed almost nothing. Okay? And, and so now, this is, I don't know how well it's going. But it's, that looks good. Well. I look really stupid. All right, that's good. Um, but now what's happening? I have become the source of charge. And this is a critical point. My hair is mapping out something that may not have been visible earlier. Initially, it was explained that electric behavior was action at a distance. When people said, why do those two things attract or repel, folks explained it by saying, well, because they push across empty space. My hair seems to be saying, no, well, space is doing it. There are these lines in space marked out by my hair. And so, oh, did you see that spark? Yeah. Ooh. Give a guy religion. Um, <laughs> the, uh, uh, so there are these lines going out. Now, this is interesting stuff. When, when Coulomb and Franklin and, and guys were working on this, they said, well, it's action at a distance. In, a, in effect, they were saying, you know, when somebody said to them, why does that attract or repel? They were saying, it's magic. Action at a distance is an unexplained phenomenon. In the 1850s, 40s, okay, Michael Faraday was a guy kind of like me. He ran the demonstration lab for the Royal Institution. And also like me, he didn't have a graduate education. Also like me, he was too dumb to have gone to grad school and learned all the math that he needed, okay? There was a lesson in this. Michael Faraday saw this stuff and he said, you know what, I don't think it's action at a distance. I think that there's a field. Now you say, well, what's the difference? Well, a field is now giving us a mechanical model. What Faraday is saying is that this guy actually doesn't affect this guy. This guy affects space, and space affects this guy. Okay? Now, let, let's take an example that may make more sense to you. You're swimming, and this weird water bug is coming to Okay? And, and you don't want this water bug. You, you know, like, he may be okay, but you know, if he's not, it's too late if he gets to you. So you don't even want to touch it. So you'd like to get rid of this water bug, and so what you do is you start like pushing the water. Okay? So now, it would be conceivable that somebody who could only see living creatures, you know, some alien from space has got vision that shows them living protoplasm. They look down, and they say, well, look, the bug is repelled by the hand. Because the hand is there and the bug moves away. But, of course, what we know is the bug doesn't give a damn about the hand, right? The hand is moving the water, and the water is moving the bug. And we have a field. Okay? And so Faraday proposed this. Great idea, but he didn't have enough math to do anything with it. And so, of course, somebody stole the idea, developed the idea, and got famous for it. His name was Maxwell. And Maxwell wrote the, the Maxwell's equations 
that really explain the way electricity and magnetism work. So the moral of the story is learn all the math you can so guys don't steal your ideas. Okay? And so, you know, you get Faraday's equations instead of Maxwell's equations. 